is a great pleasure for Mrs. Kennedy and for me, for the Vice President and Mrs. Johnson, and for the members of Congress to welcome the ambassadorial corps of our hemisphere, our longtime friends, to the White House today. 139 years ago this week, the United States, stirred by the heroic struggle of its fellow Americans, urged the independence and recognition of the new Latin American republics. It was then at the dawn of freedom throughout this hemisphere that Bolivar spoke of his desire to see the Americas fashioned into the greatest region in the world. Greatest, he said, not so much by virtue of her area and her wealth as by her freedom and her glory. Never in the long history of our hemisphere has this dream been nearer to fulfillment and never has it been in greater danger. The genius of our scientists has given us the tools to bring abundance to our land, strength to our industry, and knowledge to our people. For the first time, we have the capacity to strike off the remaining bonds of poverty and ignorance, to free our people for the spiritual and intellectual fulfillment, which has always been the goal of our civilization. Yet at this very moment of maximum opportunity, we confront the same forces which have imperiled America throughout its history the alien forces which once again seek to impose the despotisms of the old world on the people of the new. I have asked you to come here today so that I might discuss these challenges and these dangers. We meet together as firm and ancient friends, united by history and experience, and by our determination to advance the values of American civilization. For this new world of ours is not a mere accident of geography. Our continents are bound together by a common history, the endless exploration of new frontiers. Our nations are the product of a common struggle, the revolt from colonial rule. And our people share a common heritage, the quest for the dignity and the freedom of man. The revolutions which gave us birth ignited in the words of Thomas Paine a spark never to be extinguished. And across vast, turbulent continents, these American ideals still stir man's struggle for national independence and individual freedom. But as we welcome the spread of the American Revolution to other lands, we must also remember that our own struggle the revolution which began in Philadelphia in 1776 and in Caracas in 1811 is not yet finished. Our hemisphere mission is not yet completed. For our unfilled task is to demonstrate to the entire world that man's unsatisfied aspirations for economic progress and social justice can best be achieved by free men working within a framework of democratic institutions. If we can do this in our own hemisphere and for our own people, we may yet realize the prophecy of the great Mexican patriot Benito Juarez that democracy is the destiny of future humanity. As a citizen of the United States, let me be the first to admit that we North Americans have not always grasped the significance of this common mission. Just as it is also true that many in your own countries have not fully understood the urgency of the need to lift people from poverty and ignorance and despair. But we must turn from these mistakes, from the failures and the misunderstandings of the past to a future full of peril but bright with hope. Throughout Latin America, a continent rich in resources and in the spiritual and cultural achievement of its people, millions of men and women suffer the daily degradations of poverty and hunger. 
They lack decent shelter or protection from disease. Their children are deprived of the education or the jobs which are the gateway to a better life. And each day the problems grow more urgent. Population growth is outpacing economic growth. Low living standards are further endangered. And discontent, the discontent of a people who know that abundance and the tools of progress are at last within their reach, that discontent is growing. In the words of Jose Figueres, once dormant peoples are struggling upward towards the sun, towards a better life, if we are to meet a problem so staggering in its dimension, our approach must itself be equally bold, an approach consistent with the majestic concept of Operation Pan America. Therefore, I have called on all people of the hemisphere to join in a new alliance for progress, Alianza Para Progressa, a vast cooperative effort, unparalleled in magnitude magnitude and nobility of purpose to satisfy the basic needs of the American people for homes, work, and land, health, and schools, techo, trabajo, e tierra, salud y escuela. First, I propose that the American republics begin on a vast new 10-year plan for the Americas a plan to transform the 1960s into an historic decade of democratic progress. These 10 years will be the years of maximum progress, maximum effort, the years when the greatest obstacles must be overcome, the years when the need for assistance will be the greatest. And if we are successful, if our effort is bold enough and determined enough then the close of this decade will mark the beginning of a new era in the American experience. The living standards of every American family will be on the rise. Basic education will be available to all. Hunger will be a forgotten experience. The need for massive outside help will have passed. Most nations will have ended a period of self-sustaining growth. And though there will be still much to do, Every American republic will be the master of its own revolution and its own hope and progress. Let me stress that only the most determined efforts of the American nations themselves can bring success to this effort. They and they alone can mobilize their resources, enlist the energies of their people, and modify their social patterns so that all and not just a privileged few, share in the fruits of growth. If this effort is made, then outside assistance will give vital impetus to progress. Without it, no amount of help will advance the welfare of the people. Thus, if the countries of Latin America are ready to do their part, and I am sure they are, then I believe the United States, for its part, should help provide resources of a scope and magnitude sufficient to make this bold development plan a success. Just as we help to provide, against equal odds nearly, the resources adequate to help rebuild the economies of Western Europe. For only an effort of towering dimensions can ensure fulfillment of our plan for a decade of progress. Secondly, I will shortly request a ministerial meeting of the Inter-American Economic and Social Council, a meeting at which we can begin the massive planning effort which will be at the heart of the Alliance for Progress. For if our alliance is to succeed, each Latin nation must formulate long-range plans for its own development, plans which establish targets and priorities ensure monetary stability, establish the machinery for vital social change, stimulate private activity and initiative, and provide for a maximum national effort. These plans will be the foundation of our development effort and the basis for the allocation of outside resources. 
a greatly strengthened IA-ECOSOC working with the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Inter-American Development Bank can assemble the leading economists and experts of the hemisphere to help each country develop its own development plan and provide a continuing review of economic progress in this hemisphere. Third, I have this evening signed a request to the Congress for $500 million as a first step in fulfilling the Act of Bogota. This is the first large-scale inter-American effort instituted by my predecessor, President Eisenhower, to attack the social barriers which block economic progress. The money will be used to combat illiteracy, improve the productivity and use of our land, wipe out disease, attack archaic tax and land tenure strictures, provide educational opportunities, and offer a broad range of projects designed to make the benefits of increasing abundance available to all. We will begin to commit these funds as soon as they are appropriated. Fourth, we must support all economic integration, which is a genuine step towards larger markets and greater competitive opportunity. The fragmentation of Latin American economies is a serious barrier to industrial growth. Projects such as the Central American Common Market and free trade areas in South America can help to remove these obstacles. Fifth, the United States is ready to cooperate in serious case-by-case -case examination of commodity market problems. Frequent violent change in commodity prices seriously injure the economies of many Latin American countries, draining their resources and stultifying their growth. Together, we must find practical methods of bringing an end to this pattern. Sixth, we will immediately step up our Food for Peace emergency program, help establish food reserves in areas of recurrent drought, help provide school lunches for children, and offer feed grains for use in rural development. For hungry men and women cannot wait for economic discussions or diplomatic meetings. Their need is urgent, and their hunger rests heavily on the conscience of their fellow men. Seventh, all the people of the hemisphere must be allowed to share in the expanding wonders of science, wonders which have captured men's imagination challenged the powers of his mind and given him the tools for rapid progress. I invite Latin American scientists to work with us in new projects in fields such as medicine and agriculture, physics and astronomy, and desalinization, to help plan for regional research laboratories in these and other fields, and to strengthen cooperation between American universities and laboratories. We also intend to expand our science teacher training programs to include Latin American instructors, to insist in establishing such programs in other American countries, and translate and make available revolutionary new teaching materials in physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics, so that the young of all of our nations may contribute their skills to the advance of science. Eighth, we must rapidly expand the training of those needed to man the economies of rapidly developing countries. This means expanded technical training programs for which the Peace Corps, for example, will be available when needed. It also means assistance to Latin American universities, graduate schools, and research institutes. We welcome proposals in Central America for intimate cooperation in higher education, cooperation which can achieve a regional effort of increased effectiveness and excellence. We are ready to help fill the gap in trained manpower, realizing that our ultimate goal must be a basic education for all who wish to learn. Ninth, we reaffirm our pledge to come to the defense 
of any American nation whose independence is endangered. As confidence in the collective security system of the OAS spreads, it will be possible to devote to constructive use a major share of those resources now spent on the instruments of war. Even now, as the government of Chile has said, the time has come to take the first steps towards a sensible limitation of arms. And the new generation of military leaders has shown an increasing awareness that armies can not only defend their country, they can, as we have learned through our own Corps of Engineers, they can help to build them. Tenth, we invite our friends in Latin America to contribute to the enrichment of life and culture in the United States. We need teachers of your literature and history and tradition, opportunities for our young people to study in your universities, access to your music, your art, and the thought of your great philosophers, for we know we have much to learn. In this way, you can help bring a fuller spiritual and intellectual life to the people of the United States and contribute to understanding and mutual respect among the nations of the hemisphere. With steps such as these, we propose to complete the revolution of the Americas, to build a hemisphere where all men can hope for a suitable standard of living and all can live out their lives in dignity and in freedom. To achieve this goal, political freedom must accompany material progress. Our alliance for progress is an alliance of free governments, and it must work to eliminate tyranny from a hemisphere in which it has no rightful place. Therefore, let us express our special friendship to the people of Cuba and the Dominican Republic and the hope they will soon rejoin the Society of Free Men, uniting with us in common effort. This political freedom must be accompanied by social change. For unless unnecessary social reforms, including land and tax reform, are freely made, unless we broaden the opportunity for all of our people, unless the great mass of Americans share in increasing prosperity, then our alliance, our revolution, our dream, and our freedom will fail. But we call for social change by free men, change in the spirit of Washington and Jefferson, of Bolivar and San Martin and Marty, not change which seeks to impose on men tyrannies which we cast out a century and a half ago. Our motto is what it has always been. Progress, yes. Tyranny, no. Progress, see. Si. Tyranny, no. But our greatest challenge comes from within. The task of creating an American civilization where spiritual and cultural values are strengthened by an ever-broadening base of material advance, where within the rich diversity of its own traditions, each nation is free to follow its own path towards progress. The completion of our task will, of course, require the efforts of all governments of our hemisphere. But the efforts of governments alone will never be enough. In the end, the people must choose, and the people must help themselves. And so I say to the men and women of the America, to the campesino in the fields, to the obrero in the cities, to the estudante in the schools, prepare your mind and heart for the task ahead. Call forth your strength and let each devote its energies to the betterment of all so that your children and our children in this hemisphere can find an ever richer and freer life. Let us once again transform the American continent into a vast crucible of revolutionary ideas and efforts, a tribute to the power of the creative energies of free men and women, an example to all the world that liberty and progress walk hand in hand. Let us once again awaken our American revolution 
until it guides the struggle of people everywhere, not with an imperialism of force or fear, but the rule of courage and freedom and hope for the future of man.